Hey, good day. It's Tourism Tim here with another episode of Tourism Marketing TV. And today I'm honored to have on my friend and really a travel industry icon, Dan Austin, who has been in the travel industry and adventure and business game for a long, long time. And it really has a, um, been a leader in um, putting out high quality, high end multi sport trips in a competitive marketplace. And um, one of the things I've always appreciated about you, Dan, is your um, commitment to excellence and your uh, earning uh, major accolades in the Travel Industry Award. I mean, Travel and Leisure's uh, world's best uh, tour operator years in a row, and all it just it goes on and on and on. I was looking at your website, and, and uh, it goes on and on, but I won't get into that today. But we're going to talk about your website and why, where it fits in and um, why it's a great tool for yourself and other tour operators, but good day, Dan. Oh, great. Thanks for having me, Tim. Um, always great to see you, and uh, in this technological world we live in, now I actually literally can see you here, so that's pretty cool. Uh, we, go, our, we go back a long way, so it's, it's been neat to see the industry evolve as well as uh, your role in it and my role in it over these last dozen years. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's been at least, I was trying to think about how long has it been? 1995, so I guess that's about 16, 17 years now. That is amazing. <laughs> I didn't realize it was that long. Maybe we're still alive, actually. <laughs> well, very, very good. Well, let's, you know, the other day I put out a question to my list, and you were kind enough to say, hey, you know, I'll, I could, I'd could, i love to respond to your question about, you know, where this website fit in and what are some of my recommendations or questions, but I'd rather just do it on the phone, and I, so it's even better to do it on Skype. So let's, right, let's just... Here, that's a great excuse to catch up with you, Tim, because I know it's been far too long. And the cool thing is that we can record it and use this to help other travel professionals around the world, which is um, something I know both of us are committed to doing and using tourism as a force for good. And, and uh, your Wheels for Change uh, program uh, is just is, is a perfect example about how tourism does good is doing good in the world. So why don't we just jump right into this? I've, I've come up with some questions here, and uh, so I wanted to know, in your overall marketing, how important is your website in um, in attracting new prospects, um, in capturing new leads, and you know, ultimately sales conversion um, in your bottom line? Well, Tim, I think the a good website, and, and there's a million of them out there, is key in any industry, not just our industry, but the fact that most travel is booked online, it's even more relevant in our industry. And it's just it's it's like having a um, catalog in front of people and accessible to people 24-7, 365 days a year. So in the, in the age we live in, it's just really um, key to have a good representation of who you are and what you are and what you do online, again, 24-7. It, I remember when you and I first met, we used to go to the old trade shows. And the only way you got in front of a, a, a group of um, travelers was to go to a trade show, and then you had maybe a Sunday afternoon between uh, noon and four to meet with them. Now that's completely changed, where they can find you any day of the week, uh, any time of the day or night. And so um, it, it's, I think it's just key that it, it represents who you are. And so it's, it needs to be well done, needs to have a lot of uh, different attributes that kind of speak to what your brand is. Um, you know, but more, more importantly is you know, that is where you're going to get, in our case, 30% of our new business. Um, about 30, 35% of our business is alumni. About 30, 35% of our business is um, repeats and referrals. And everything else we do is, is all centered around bringing business to our website and getting that new book of business from the web. Whether it be related to, you know, everything's uh, PR and driving traffic to the website. But, but that's the funnel. That's where it all, all the new leads funnel through the website. I like the way that you expressed and talked about your website or websites in general, a good website, and that it applies to any business. I mean, it, 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 with so much business being done online, and, um, and for some people, uh, it might represent 70% or 80% of the funnel. So it, it, it's so important and so key. But the, the, the sad truth is a lot of websites out there are just frankly crap. And, well, again, it's a representation of you. So if you have a crap website up there, people are going to get the wrong idea. It doesn't have to be flashy. It doesn't have to have all the latest bells and whistles. But it has to be consistent. It has to work. It has to be quick. Um, but again, you know, it, it's, it is a reflection of, of if their first experience is on your website, 
and it leaves them questioning, gosh, you can't do a decent website. What kind of a tour operator are you? And then it's defeating the purpose. You're going to work real hard to get that website in front of the viewer. The last thing you want to do is turn them off. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's like going out on a date with someone that you really like and uh, you wouldn't show up with your hair all messy and clothes all dirty. You want, you, you want to make a good representation. Um, one of the, the, the things that the website allow us to do so well that you guys have done, are champions at is, is the use of what's called social proof where you're using that, hey, someone has traveled before you that uh, for the visitors come to your website, they can see that many others have traveled before. You've been in business a long time. You run quality trips, and you've got clients talking about it. You've got videos. You've got all these uh, endorsements and testimonials. You've got the awards. And so to me, even if your site looks good and it functions well, how do I know that you're experienced and you run a quality trip? And that's where the social proof is, and now social media reinforces that. Um, and tell me a little bit about um, where your use of, of social proof and your awards, your testimonials, where does that, how, how, what have you noticed it does on bringing more people into your funnel or how, what is their frame of mind when they call you and when they're considering a booking? Well, I think it's it's um, might even be a little simpler than all that. It, it might even be that, you know, you're going to get, and I, I'm not great with the statistics, but you know that you're going to get 10, 15 seconds to make a first impression. Somebody's gonna, they, when, when somebody's typically surfing, somebody know, does, has no idea who you are and knows nothing about you, they do a search for Montana vacations. They get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of um, URLs that pop up via Google, and, and then they, they're going to pick the first couple. They're going to start down the path. First one's going to come up. Maybe it's not what they're looking for. Or maybe it is, and then they're going to go to the next one and next one. They're only going to go to three or four or five and before they start really honing in on what they're looking for. And um, it gives you that, that first snapshot is to, you know, grab them and say, um, hey, this is what we do. Um, you know, first off, you're, you know, you're at the right site. And others um, before you have found that, you know, this isn't our first year. This isn't our first rodeo. We, we, we do this stuff all the time, and we do it really, really well. So uh, I always remember a term you uh, first uh, I first heard from you. I don't know if you coined it or not, but that defining credibility statement. Um, I remember a catalog you and I worked on some 15 years ago, and when we were brand new, and uh, at, at that time, and we were trying to figure out, boy, if you're brand new, having that defining credibility statement, that's tough. So when you start hitting the um, process, kind of the evolution of where we're at today. Um, and having all these accolades and all these different awards, it's key, in my opinion, to at least make sure people are aware of that. Because, again, a, an emblem or an icon might take two or three seconds to the brain to digest what that is versus two paragraphs trying to tell them how great you are. And they're not going to read it. They're going to read one or two sentences and go, no, yeah, i got to move on. And, and so to me, it's just an opportunity to, to put something in front of people that make them want to learn more. They're not going to book the trip because you have this icon. They're not going to book the trip because you're, you know, you're cute and fun to be with and you've got this great website. But it is going to want them to stick around, view more pages, and ultimately, um, my goal, and I, I know everybody's a little different on this, my goal, we're a very high-touch company. My goal is to, to make the website um, uh, enticing enough that they want to call. And that's what we want people to do. We're still old school enough that we want you to call us. So we've got to give you that confidence that we're the, you're going to take five minutes out of your day, dial an 800 number, and on the other end of that call is somebody that you want to talk to. Um, and that's all we can hope for. But it's all a matter of giving the people confidence that that's, that's, that's really what they're looking for. You, we've got something that you want, and so you need to call us to find out more about it. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm tickled and honored that you remember the defining credibility statement. Yeah, that, that is something that I coined. I just tattooed on my behind, but that's another story. <laughs> that, I'm, I'm, I'm really thrilled to hear that because you're right. It all comes down to literally seconds, that impression you make. And yes, the icon is not going to convert them, but it's just going to get them uh, in the door and going a little deeper so that they can make sure that what they're looking for is in alignment with what you're offering. And I agree that that... that that the getting them to call you or email should be the, the ultimate goal uh, of a site. Yeah, it's great if they, they make a booking right there, but uh, your odds radically increase if you can just get them off their fannies 
to do that. And, and you're so right, Dan, about it. I'm glad you brought up about the time that, that you really only have 10 or 15 seconds. And I just, you know, I was responding to a blog posting where someone asked me the question about, um, it was about, uh, they were saying, oh, that they couldn't, they, they weren't doing well because of the economy. And, uh, you know, we used to do really well. And I went and looked at their website and, you know, it, it was, it need some help. And, uh, uh, and, and I was talking about just that, the 10 to 15 seconds that you've got. And I just didn't think that his site was making a good impression. And I gave him some examples and recommended Google Analytics if he hasn't had that in his site. So he knows absolutely um, the user, um, how these users are, are visiting their site, where they're going, how long they're staying. Let's, on the, t the topic of websites, social proof, getting people off there, moving through that sales funnel, and, and that's a really good term, is there any questions that you have that are coming up for you now in this ever-changing world of, of technology? And yes, I am becoming a tech geek, sort of, <laughs> uh, but certainly committed to uh, the sales and marketing and, and making more money and online. Is there any I, questions you have or something that you want to be, you know, you want to install on your, in your web marketing you haven't got around to yet? Well, I think, um, I think to be honest with you, we're more focused on making what we have work better. Um, it doesn't, you know, build it and they will come does not work, especially in this today's online world. So 99% of our energy is put towards uh, search engine optimization. We're really working hard. So you, you, you have to have balance, and you have to have a balance between a site that looks good, a site that, that functions well, but also a site that, that Google and, and Bing and all the others find very um, user-friendly. And that's where, that's where the heavy lifting is. That's the elephant in the room. Um, to me, again, you, you, you want your site to perform, and you want it to be you know, the brand to work and all, enticing and all that stuff. But the key is build it, and, and they will come does not work. And so your energy, you know, I, I personally took over our website about a year ago and I was shocked to find some of the basic problems with it that was costing us Google points. I call it link juice. It was costing yeah. us, it was costing us um, problems with Google where Google, you know, Google's got 8 billion websites to, to, to uh, uh, analyze every day and index every day. And so if they find any reason to put you to the bottom of the pile, they're going to do it. So the first thing that we did is we went through our site um, in, in great detail and made sure that it was working and, and it was Google friendly. And then now, um, I would say, you know, I don't know, uh, uh, I'd have to really drill down, but, you know, majority of our marketing dollars are now going towards making our site work better. Cool. Um, and people are all the time, you know, we, went through, we all went through this phase a few years ago where we were cranking out new websites every year. We were every couple of years tops. And you wanted to have the latest flash or the latest add-ons or plug-ins or whatever. Um, I personally have stepped back from that and I want my site to work better than any other site out there. And so my energy is, is taking an existing site that we've had for years now, keeping it fresh, keeping it relevant but also working hard to make it work better within Google. And so my money, that same website development fund bucket that you would have, I'd actually put in that bucket more into SEO. Neat. Neat. Well, I, um, I like the way you're, you're looking at this. Um, as you know, I've been, um, the last few years I worked very closely with uh, Yannick Silver, who is uh, one of the internet marketing gurus, and hanging out with all these internet marketing millionaires. And one of the key things that I learned from them is that their successes online came not from broad changes and, you know, redoing it, um, but those incremental little improvements, slowly going in and looking at how could they test and tweak, test and tweak, not only on driving more targeted traffic through SEO efforts and pay-per-click, but also what could they do in the sales funnel uh, aspect? Where can they make little increments? And so, and it's amazing, the math, a little bit of incremental improvement in and the SEO and a little bump of traffic combined with a little improvement in the sales funnel conversion, the what was coming out the bottom line was was exponential increases in revenues, and it, it, it was huge. And so I, I, you know, I look at a lot of websites. Your your website is great, and the nice thing is, yes, we can always make those improvements. And I actually have some ideas for you. We'll take we'll discuss another time to make little improvements there to to take it up just a little bit more. But um, you you're already got a website that sells well. 
too many people do the opposite. They spend all this money or effort driving traffic to a website that stinks. And they right. wonder why they're not, they're, you know, they're, they're just, their money's just going out and they're not making any sales. So I commend you for putting your energy into, you know, keeping a, 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 and making small improvements to your website, but focusing on the traffic and, you know, and making those little incremental improvements. Well, I, I say it's all about balance. You got to, yeah. you got to figure out the balance and you got to, and, and again, you just got to kind of work in this business, competitive marketplace that we're in. You've got to kind of work every, all the angles and make sure that you've got everything covered. Well, you had some excellent suggestions today, and I'm just uh, it's so tickled to, to watch your journey, you know, this adventure that we're on in the business of, of travel and adventure, and, and we've watched and supported each other for, for all these years, and it's fun to see it in other companies. In closing, do you have, what suggestions do you have for other tra travel professionals out there, whether they're just getting going or maybe they're seasoned pros like yourself, um, specifically on the website in, in internet marketing? You know, I mean, that's a tough one. I, I think one of the big um, kind of groundbreaking, deal-changing uh, moments that we came up with is when I personally uh, decided to take responsibility for it. As, as the owner of the company, the director of the company, um, you know, there's so many things that we have to be responsible for. But you, it, it's really hard to direct something you don't know or don't understand. And so what I found is by, by digging in myself, and learning, you know, learning how to use Google Analytics, learning how to use SEO Moz, learning how to use all these tools, and there are amazing tools out there. And free, and then, free, and then meeting with and and, um, and 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 communicating with those that knew a lot more than I do. I don't, you don't have to know it all, but you need to know enough to follow to, to when you start making decisions where you know where you're going to spend your money, where you're going to spend your energy. Those decisions, as any part of your business, those decisions are based on some level of knowledge or understanding that you have. And it seems like once I took that, you know, I mean, I've always used web, I've always um, uh, been involved, you know, uh, but, but once I kind of took it to that next level and I started understanding the mechanics of it, so that when I was talking to my SEO experts and they said, you know, we've got broken links here, and, and, I, and I knew what that meant or, what they, or, or why it was key, it, it really made it, um, our site start performing. And then, and then the last thing that, and I hear you all the time, preach to this is measure it but I mean that goes with every aspect of your business you have to be able to measure and what I find in this in this niche industry is so many people don't and so they, they do things but then yet they don't know if they work or they do things and they don't they, they think they're working they don't know where these customers are coming from they don't know this so we really uh, very systematically measure not only our website and our website analytics but you know we have 247 keywords that I measure every single month on where we were ranking on those keywords yesterday and last week and this week and what's moving up, what's moving down, um, to where you know every week we can we can start really tracking, graphing trends and see where we need to put our energy and efforts. So uh, again, I think you know hey, you have to have a quality site, you have to know what it's doing, and then you have to measure it. And you have to really understand the analytics involved so that you know if you're. It's not just um, it's not just as simple as, as counting the number, number of visitors to your website every month, which obviously we all do, but it's, you know, how long are they staying? What's the bounce rate? Where are they going? How many pages are they viewing? What pages are they viewing? You know, um, which and ones we, are they leaving on? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What page are they leaving on? And, and all those tools are out there. Um, they're a heck of a lot easier to use and a lot of people, um, you know, get a little overwhelmed. Um, but, but once you understand it, can read that stuff, um, it'll make all the difference because, uh, I think uh, the, 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 just no different than going to a, a trade show 20 years ago, taking a list of names and figuring out did those people book or how was it? What was the ROI on that trade show? Eventually, you got to have an ROI on your website. It's a little bit harder, but it is. But it is still key to understand what how it's performing for you. Well, wise, wise words, Dan. That that is excellent. I uh, I've been doing quite a few uh, case study interviews recently and and digging into people's website and both the good, the bad, and the ugly, and it's shocking. How many people have a website that was put up by a designer? You know, it might look real pretty, but they've they've omitted core key tools like in the metadata. There's keywords they're not there, or they're the wrong ones, or there's too many, or they don't have a brief description. There's this basic stuff that the search engines must have in order to index you. They're not even in the website, and they wonder why they're not getting any business. Well, it's a really competitive marketplace out there. If you, no matter what you put in. 
Google, you're gonna it's gonna puke out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of websites. So you do really need to make sure you're not only at the top, but but when people get there, you know, you start seeing that bounce rate uh, increase. You you really need to start looking at, gee, why are people going to the website? I went to all this work to get them there, and now they're just leaving. Yeah, yeah. Well, that that's and that's why it's been really part of my mission to help people with their marketing communications with their website. Uh, because you know all the traffic in the world doesn't mean diddly squat if they don't convert into a solid prospect and ultimately a paying guest or a new arrival. So, um, Dan, there, there's a there's a little bit of um, one thing that I always that we work on real hard. A little bit of psychology involved. You want to make sure you get the right people there too. Yes. I mean, I, I just going over it with a new SEO um, firm, and we're we're talking about it. And, you know, and they're saying, well, look at all the traffic to. You know, uh, Yellowstone camp programs or Yellowstone campsites. We should that should be one of our key words. Mm-hmm. And well, we don't camp in Yellowstone, so why would I want all those campers coming to our website and just cluttering up? You know what we know. So what you really need to also think kind of along the lines of what type of traffic do you want to your site? Definitely, definitely. Well, Dan, it's always a pleasure, and that the cool, <laughs> the good, the good part is is that you and I could talk on go on forever and ever about the business <laughs> of travel. Uh, the bad part is that both of us are time challenged today, but I look forward to uh, touching bases with you again soon and uh, catching up, finding out how your new SEO stuff is doing. And uh, thanks so much for sharing your wisdom today um, with other uh, travel people. And I've got a, it looks like I got someone calling in from Egypt uh, right now, but I'm not going <laughs> to take the. Tim, yeah, well, take thanks, the- and uh, I'll uh, I'm off to Chiapas, Mexico next week, and but, you know, before I leave or as soon as I get back, we'll chat again. Fantastic. All right, I'm going to sign off with the recording right now. So uh, I'm often asked to endorse, or especially in this new age of like, like in Facebook, all that, we, we get asked to endorse individuals all the time, and I usually ignore them. And today I, I have the opportunity to endorse a good friend of mine, Tim Warren. Uh, Tim and I have known each other for some 15 years, and when somebody like Tim asks you to endorse them, the only challenge I have is, 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 is how can I articulate 15 years of experience and what, I, what I've come to know and respect about Tim. So I'll make this short. Um, I've known Tim, as I said, for 15 years, um, a quality individual. What I really enjoy most is the fact you can talk about any aspect of sales and marketing, and Tim knows what you're talking about. And we can kick around ideas, have fun for, for literally hours. Unfortunately, there's not enough time in the day for the kind of interaction that Tim and I would enjoy. Um, and in the rare uh, opportunity I get to interact with him, I always look forward to it. Um, and I actually encourage anybody that gets a chance to work with Tim, um, give him the time, dig in. I can guarantee you that a conversation won't go by where you won't learn at least something. And take something you can walk away from, take back to your business, and, uh, and, and use to improve what it is you do. So with that said, Tim, it's been great, to get, and been great working with you over the years, and I look forward to many, many more.